it's what she really wants. I really dislike when you neurotypicals. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that in a game. Like, I don't dislike when you neurotypicals think you know what's best for others. I hate when you call me that, Izzy. <laughs> Welcome back to To The Moon. Last time we played, we got an introduction to the characters of Dr. Watts, Dr. Rosalind. We know that we're gonna do something with Johnny. I'm assuming going into his memories, there's all the interesting things in the basement in the lighthouse. Having said all of that, let's get going. And initiate it. Ready or not, here it goes. That's, again, something I don't think we wanna hear from professionals. Please don't kill my eye holes. Oh! Maybe this is how we get into those chests in the basement. This should be the last accessible memory, but who are those people at the top? Disable speech for all except Johnny. What does that mean? Done, let's get him. At any time, you can view your position in time by moving the mouse toward the top of the screen. Oh, okay. So we're at the most recent memory. We can go back in time to like adult, young adult, teenager, kid, like little kid. Okay. And we can still view their like actual status in real life. Okay. Can we interact with things? Kind of? Not. Oh, I forget. We have to like go in front of it. It still says the same thing. What about in the bathroom? There were some of these rooms where like there wasn't anything there. Oh, we can't go there. Oh, the pictures are blank. Interesting. This filter kind of gives it a different feel. I got a note about the clock. The clock said 11 o'clock before. What is. What does the note say? Description, the clocks in Johnny's house never tick. That's, that's fucking weird. <laughs> but do they talk? <laughs> when it said disable speech for everybody except for Johnny, does that mean that like, if Johnny's wife was here and like spoke, if that wasn't off, we could hear them? River, so this is still the same. Is Johnny going to be in the basement? How do I? <sighs> oh, I can only go to very few areas because of where the arrows are. So, is Johnny going to be near the lighthouse? My guess is yes. Or... Oh, this is the caretaker. And Johnny. Which makes sense if this is Johnny's most recent memory that we can access. Johnny, this is in color. What a pleasant surprise. We don't get many visitors around here. Well, it's not John. Me. At least, like, how it's registering here. It's interesting, like, this idea of, does Johnny realize that this is not reality? It doesn't seem that he is. So if we were to change things in this dream world, inherently would Johnny perceive it as reality? So let's say hypothetically, we were to have saved Johnny's wife from dying. <sighs> Wouldn't that mean that when Johnny died, Johnny would just, like, think that that's how his life played out, I guess? If that's, like, his, his last, like, conscious, I guess it's not even conscious, but, like, that's his last memory? That's sad. In a way. Bittersweet. That's a way to describe it, right? To give someone what they actually want. That's still sad. What a pleasant surprise. We don't get many visitors around here. My name is Dr. Ava Rosalind. This is Dr. V 
Dr. Von Matterhorn. Dr. Lorenzo Von Matterhorn. This reminds me of Psych, where Sean introduces himself um, as names that are not John and Goss. Like, that's this reminds me of a Psych. Dr. Neil Watts. Are you familiar with the Sigmund Agency of Life Generation? Just sounds very Umbrella Corps. Oh, are you two from the agency? Okay, so Johnny realizes what that name means and inherently then what must be happening? How convenient. I've just been thinking of calling you. Lily, get us some tea, please. The Lily's voice would be off, right? So she wouldn't say anything. Yeah, Lily? Actually, you've already called us? Ooh. So they have total control here. So something that I had wondered before was this idea of... They, they talked about things as though there were these weird limitations to what they were doing. It's like, oh, well, why... Why do they say it depends on if they, like, for, well, if they can fulfill these dreams? But if they can just, like, zip people out of existence in this dream world and make them talk or not talk, why are there limitations? Can't they just, like, snap their fingers like they're a genie or something and make it happen? We are here to fulfill our contract from the relative future. He seems very scared. It's like, what is happening? Which is understandable. Careful there, if you slip off the cliff, we're gonna have to reload this memory. So again, this is like some dark humor, but it's this idea of like, they have total control over this. So what stops them from potentially being able to fulfill any wish at any time in, in, in a quick manner? Watch it, Neil, show some respect. Eh, it's just a program, you know, it's not. It may be filtered through a program, but inherently, if your job is dealing with fulfilling people's last wishes, it's not just a program. You're still dealing with people and feelings and memories and all of these things that go into emotions that, that, that are people. It's not just a program. I know, but this is his last successful memory and we need its cooperation. So there is a certain amount of buy-in. So like getting the buy-in from people is their limitation. If you treat it like a program, if you treat him like a program, you don't get buy-in from people. Which is very much like, oh, I mean, there's like people. Worst comes to worst, we can just reboot it. But it's very dehumanizing. And, and again, like if you treat him like a program, you're not, you're just gonna do the exact same thing, right? Why would you waste time like that? You? You're here to take me to the moon, aren't you? Yes, John. I suppose I had a good run. Like that moment where you realize you're dying. Not good enough, it seems. You don't... S so... That moment of saying, like, oh, I had a good run is basically, like, a, some form of, like, acceptance that, like... I'm dying. That's what this means, right? And Dr. Wasp is like, <laughs> your life can't have been that good, otherwise you wouldn't need one last wish. But it doesn't... There's probably always something that we wish would have been different about our life. No matter how perfect our life seems or how great our life is, because inherently there are things about our life that we can't control things about other people that we can't control, or even things like, let's say that Johnny's wife passed away from something that inherently he can't control, illness, accidents, things like that. Those are things that he could never control. So it, it feels like a somewhat blamey comment to say that when there's so much about life that we can't control. And 
So there may be things that we we feel like we wish we could change if we could. I think the goal is potentially accepting the fact that we can't change those things, even though we would really like to. So, can you do it? Can you take me to the moon? I feel like there's so much meaning behind what that means to this character, though. We can't, but you might be able to. Why do you want to go there? That's a very good question. I don't know. It's fine. You can tell us. It's essential for helping us to get you there. Or to go there. Do you want the fame? The money? I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it's about emotional connections. You gotta have a motive. But we don't always know the motive, right? There is always a, a reason and a purpose behind what we do, but we don't always know what those are. I'm sorry, but I really don't know. I just do. I can already tell this is gonna be a pain in the ass. I feel like this is some of the dark humor that I've mentioned before. But dark humor can also come across as very, like, minimizing. Um, especially to people who aren't in the medical field. Or, like, someone who's a patient or something like that. Nevertheless, Johnny, here's what we will do. We need to get to your childhood, Ooh, but it is too distant to do so in one memory hop. Thus, we will need thus. I don't feel like I hear very many people say thus in everyday conversation. We will need to tra traverse through your memories with gradual backward leaps, which you've given us the permission to do in the relative future. Yeah, but permission... Um, like verbally and like with per with forms is different than like buy-in. It's this idea of like, you know, like lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? Once we lay down the waypoints in your childhood memories for distant access, we will return here. That's when we'll, that's when you'll need to help us influence the childhood you to become an astronaut. Or get on a giant catapult. It's one of those things where it's like, I feel like this humor would be like, is one of those like, maybe like not the time and a place kind of a things. The point is, and I feel like that's what his partner is saying too. The point is, you'll need to have more to say than just, I don't know. But what if they don't know still, right? Which is fair. <laughs> as long as you can take me to the moon, I will cooperate in any way possible. Good. Now, in order to leap to a memory, we need an item that is of importance to you. So, like the platypus or the um, rabbit. But we don't know that those are of importance to him. They could have been important to his wife. Do you have a memento of some sort to get us started? What did he get? The rabbit! That'll do. What is the significance of the rabbit? I guess we'll find out. Well, shall we? Wait, he's first. What is the rabbit? No, Moon. We'll need to prepare this memento first. No, let me read about it first. Objective. The moon in Johnny's memory is full. Huh, I can't tell what these notes are for. Like, I usually notes in games feel like they they give information. It's a way to learn more about things without having it come directly from a character. So you're not like stuffing all the information directly into dialogue. But these notes aren't saying a lot, are they? I'm sure that they're important, but they're in a way they're important in a way that I don't quite understand. They make me wonder if like maybe these are connected to like memory time skip things. I don't know. 
Oh, I was like, what's up top? And it was just, it's this. So, okay, what do we do with this? We prepare the memento first. Oh, oh, okay. Complete the memento, click the orbs to flip pieces? Well, that wasn't hard. The memento can now be activated for trust traversal. That's a, that word is harder than it feels like it should be. Activate the memento. What about my privacy? Why is privacy a concern? Not saying you shouldn't be. We should all have privacy, but just why now of all times? But also this idea of like. In theory, you know that you've already signed a, signed the forms and all that other stuff. Is it is this like the same question in the future you would have asked? I, I don't know. We'll try not to violate what we can avoid. But in most cases, it can't be helped. Mm. So basically, like, we're going to violate shit and we can't help it. Oh, that's not great. It also depends on how we define a violation of privacy, too, which is a subjective thing. Platypus, the bunny, there's an umbrella. Turn off visibility and interactivity. It'd be messy to be seen. Yeah, yeah. Happy? So we can observe, but we won't be seen. We're, we're silent observers here. Jeez, I forgot to ask him about all those rabbits. This is creeping me out. We probably should have checked his record for psychopathy first. Just because someone does something unusual, though, that doesn't mean that someone's a psychopath. What the? Did he hear me? That's impossible. It's probably just a part of this memory. Then I stand by my point. Again, just because someone does something that is unusual. Like, this sounds more... This looks more like he is frustrated. At... Uh, the music not turning out how he wants it. Either with writing it, or... How he's playing it, or... His wife still being gone. Anyway, quit blabbering and find a momentum... Me momento here to hop from. Interact with objects to establish five memory links. Well, there's the platypus. But we can't interact with that, can we? The umbrella. Requires memory links to shoot. Okay. Clock is moving, but soundless. Oh, that's one. Okay. So is the Umbrella the future one and we can't use it because we haven't interacted with enough objects? It feels like the platypus is important, but nothing happens. Multicolored paper rabbit. Well, aren't you special having two colors and all your siblings look like they are drowned in bleach? What's that? You think you're really creepy? Well, yes, I agree. Oh, that is one. I just assumed that it wouldn't be one because... It's what we used to get here. Well, is this one? No. The light. The light just always turns stuff on and off. I don't know what I expected. Oh, he's up here too. What is over here? The Emperor's New Clothes by Hans Christian Andersen. Isn't Hans Christian Andersen the composer? Isn't that what I'm thinking of? Like, they made Cats in Phantom of the Opera. Am I thinking of the right name? Selection of reading from medical journals. Is that one? No. Okay. What about the art over here? Oh, it's not. Okay. Oh! Okay, if I click on him, things change. An old and patched up backpack. What is this? A million years old. 
I guess we'll find out. Jar? A glass bottle of pickled olives. <laughs> I hate this stuff. What's to hate? It's, it's pickled olive. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> oh, the book over here changed. No. No, it was there before. Weird. I could have sworn it wasn't. I mean, I know I clicked on it because I commented on it, but I guess it just looked different. Something about it. What about, what about the flowers? Fresh wild flowers. Don't. If we have to explain our presence to him at every memory, I'd go crazy. Don't tempt me. Okay, so we don't talk to him this time. We use the memory links with the umbrella memento. Oh, we just like shoot it? Wow, okay. Haruken! I wasn't expecting that reference. What the f Really? That's that's what we're gonna bleep out? What what the fuck was that? What? It's it's drag it's Dragon Ball. Isn't it Dragon Ball? It's dra it's Dragon Ball. Right? It's Dragon Ball. No, it's 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 Street Fighter Mortal Kombat. It's one of those. It's either Dragon Ball, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. It's something like that. It's some nerdy reference. What? That's it. I'm doing the breaking from now on. Okay. Memento. Let's prepare the memento. <laughs> Can't remember what that reference is from. Reminder, the corner orb can flip the entire diagonal. Ooh. So last time was just easier than it should have been, is what you're telling me. Because last time I was like, this is so easy. There we go. That wasn't awful. So I can interact with it now? The monument, the grave or whatever it was. When it comes to rain through is better than onto. I don't mind it regardless. Seems like these memory hops only span a short period of time. We need to find a leaping memento or it's going to take forever. Let's eh, just enjoy the scenery. Well, but these mementos can be very meaningful. Or these moments in time. In memory of River E. Wiles. Yeah. Like these things are obviously meaningful. Requires three bars of memory links to proceed. It's like three of these to go in or like three full ones i'm gonna hope three in general well, what else is there to click on here because i can click on him oh the platypus was there an old stuffed toy platypus and that had two of them just by itself honestly i just don't think this animal is the right to exist Wow! Watts has some very powerful statements there. I don't think that's that's quite fair, but okay. Rule's not big enough for two of you. <laughs> two platypuses. Or two Watts. It's finished, River. So Watts has already gone inside. Rosaline Ros Rosaline sees this. Memory of John. Like you, I'll be able to watch over her every day. Oh, did they have a kid? The platypus is their kid. Not, not literally their kid, but like their kid's toy. She won't be alone anymore. It's sad. I might never understand why, but I stayed true to your wish. I'm sure Anya is grateful to you, too. So is Anya their kid? But when I'm 
god. Yeah, what's gonna happen to the platypus now? Who is going to watch over us? Is that the connect- like, at least one part of the connection of the moon? Then you can always watch over everybody. Hmm. This is already sad. So she decides to talk to him. Who are you? My name is Ava. I was just passing by. Was she your wife? So, Rosalind feels bad for him in a way that we haven't seen from Watts and decides to try to connect to him which I think I think that can be hard sometimes if your job means that you are constantly seeing people who are dying in some kind of hospice situation or any kind of helping profession like, ideally, you're in that job because you want to help people, like, that's what you want to do. But it can also be really hard to build those meaningful connections with people when you know that there's a time limit. Like, it can be hard for you, right? But then, if we're in that type of helping profession, I think there's often still, like, the idea is we go into that field, or these fields, there's a variety of helping professions. Um... Because, and I'm assuming that, like, that's what this is. This this type of job that doesn't exist in reality. Because, um, I'm assuming this character went into that because she wanted help. Um, versus, like, you know, pay or something like that. Um, but when we're in a helping profession like this, even though it can be hard on us, I think we still want to almost, like, take that on. Because we look at it like, it, if it will help the other person, right? Like, why else go into helping profession if you don't want to help? <laughs> but that can still be hard. Because this character has seen 10 people that she's built connections with before they've passed away. 100 people. That's a lot. That's so much. So to make the very conscious choice purposely build that connection with someone before they pass away it can be very hard. <sighs> Her name was River. That's a special name. It didn't need to happen. So some kind of accident? Hmm? She, she didn't need to do it. It's not what they are implying. But she... You wouldn't understand. I don't even understand. It's a very sad situation. Received a note, Anya. Yeah, these notes, they're not, they don't tell us more about the story. Someone John and River cared for. I think it's their kid, Anya. I think it's her platypus. I wonder how Watts is gonna react to it too. I wonder if Watts is gonna chew us out. About time you got here. I almost thought you fell off the cliff. I don't think that's a good joke, Watts. I know that you're using some dark humor here, but I think that's a little too far. You know, it's a time and a place. What are you doing? Enjoying the scenery. What else? Any luck here? Big luck. Huge. Dinosauric. Huh. This place looks pretty empty. It's a lighthouse. What did you? Or what do you expect? Bunnies? Oh, the platypus is here again. Anyways, I'll catch you on the other side. Have fun re-breaking the barrier for yourself. All 
Okay, so... This is the thing that we need to break through. That... Um, well, it's already broke through. Broken lighthouse lamp. So inherently, like, it's, it, it's possible. We know. I'm so sorry. Memento. I have a feeling these are going to be harder as we go. Ideal shows the minimum number of moves the memento can be completed in. Well, that's nice. I'm probably not going to do that. No, I didn't. I... Sitting alone at the top of the lighthouse. Just enough. After we pay for your operation, we'll have just enough left for it, so don't you worry. River. Oh, this is the river, not their kid. White lie. That's what you call it, right? No. I'm sure we can just stop it. It's the rabbits are around her. I don't like it when you lie. I calculated our finances. I know how it's like. Why do you try to convince me against my will? To do the operation? So, like, she's sick somehow. And John... Johnny's trying to convince her to do the operation. That might bankrupt them. Because, unfortunately, like, medical debt is, like, the number one reason why people have bankruptcies in America. Which is... A lot to process sometimes. But I think that's also an understandable thing when we don't want someone to die, to leave, right? Could we call that bargaining when we're talking about the stages of grief and loss? Maybe. But this idea of I'm going to do everything I can. And, like, where is her consent in it, right? That feels like part of this conversation, too. Why do you try to convince me against my will? We need the money for your medical bills, River. I understand. Wait, no, this is a different conversation than I thought. I understand that Anya means a lot to you, but this, this is too much. I mean, she... She isn't even. Do you know what makes me happy, Johnny? What? Do you? Well, I do. I just hope you can help me with it. River. So he almost thinks of himself as Johnny, I feel like, because the name says John for himself inside his own, like, dream. But she calls him Johnny. So I wonder if he started calling himself Johnny because of his wife, because his wife called him Johnny. So she doesn't want the operation. She doesn't want the treatment, not because of, like, the cost for herself, because they can afford it, but because if she gets the treatment they can't keep whatever is going on with Anya that's what it is so it's like the on whatever Anya is going on with Anya is more of an emotional support for her and that's worth more to her than the operation and he's basically saying the operation is more important so they're disagreeing about those values what you do with our money is up to you 
but if you would grant my wish, I want you to use it to finish building that house. What house? The lighthouse? And then for every day that you live there... No, it can't be the lighthouse. I wonder if this is a completely different house. Because the piano is in one room. And for every day that you live there, I want you to watch over her. Visit her, speak to her, comfort her. I don't want her to be alone anymore. And what about you? So basically, like, the whole thing with Anya is more important than her. Happy. I'll be happy. It's like, I'll be happy if you do this for me. Even if it means I don't get the operation and I'm not alive anymore. It's like that kind of an accident. So that's why he views it as an accident. He didn't use the word accident, if I remember right, but like this idea of it shouldn't have happened. That's how he phrased it. So like he can see it that it shouldn't have happened because if she had gotten the operation, then like she could still be alive. But then how would she have seen it? Like, how would she be emotionally, right? This, this difference in values and what's most important. Johnny. Yes. I made this. The rabbit. The multicolored rabbit. Johnny didn't make it. Tell me what it is. What? Just tell me what it is. It's a rabbit, like all the others you made. What else? Um, it's made of paper? <laughs> so he hangs on to these because they're a connection to her. She made them. But they're also locked away. Maybe because they're painful? We don't know how often he saw them, though, because that was the promise, right? What else? <laughs> Its body is yellow and the rest is blue. Good. What else? This feels like a test where it's like, what answer do you want from me? <laughs> Look, River. I wrote a song. It's for you. Okay. He's gonna play it for her. Well, would you like to hear it? Yes. You didn't have to bring the piano in here for this. I can hear you just fine with the door open. Well, now it's here. Also, those pianos are chonkers. Like, it takes a lot to move them. By the time it's there, it is staying there. It's called for a river. Why so cliche? Because that's what people do when they're in love and they care for people. And, like, why not? <laughs> it's... Just a placeholder. It's like the frustration from before feels like just frustration that she's gone. Who is this Anya they were talking about? If she's so important, shouldn't we have seen her in his late memories? I mean, we did. I think it's the platypus. I guess he didn't keep that promise after all. He did. It's the platypus. Or it has something to do with the platypus. Unless... Rosalind. Rosalind? Rosalind. 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 Whatever. Unless what? It... Never mind. <sighs> hey, that's the same song the kids were playing earlier, huh? I guess he taught them. You know what? I'm too manly for this. I'm heading on this idea of like what is manly or not manly. Listening to music isn't a, a gendered trait. We can listen to music. Just like we can have emotions regardless of our gender. Like Johnny is demonstrating that perfectly fine. I already got my memory links. You want to hit your quick ride or look around yourself? I want to stay and explore. Go on ahead. I'll catch up with you. 
Don't you miss the days when memory audio to MP8, it's not even MP4 or MP3s, conversion was legal? I think I brought home over 2,000 songs during my first year on this job. Okay, so we know this is the thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the rabbit. And River. What about the book? The Emperor's New Clothes by Hans Christian Andersen. So maybe that's why that book was so important. Okay. I keep thinking I can't walk through the rabbits. I can. So what is outside this room? Oh, I have two of them already. Oh. Pot of mixed dough. Glass, <laughs> glass bottle of pickled olives, of course. Someone really likes these. Nicholas, they're new. I'm telling you, there's just no way. Is it moving it up? What if we take it apart? Yeah. This is when they were moving it. Look at us, John. We aren't exactly at the ripe age of piano moving. <laughs> You know what? If this means that much to you, I'll pay for the professionals to do this. I can't help saving that house for you, so this is the least I can do. Do I have all of them? Okay. I can still hear the piano music. It's not just two notes. <laughs> This would be a terribly sad job to do. To go back through people's memories like that. <laughs> I totally did that in the minimum amount of moves. Finally. Look, okay? The puzzle was trickier than I thought. My brain hold took longer than I thought. This is a theme of like grief and loss of this that it makes me a little scared to see what will happen whenever we move through this. Oh, they're building the house. Look what we have here. Yeah. I bet they saw this cliff and thought it was not dangerous enough without people living on it. <sighs> I mean, I'm sure it was the, like, beauty in it. Is that River? Oh, Isabel. Nick called and said I should come. I brought you pickled olives. They're your favorite, right? I heard about River. Will she be okay? No. Her illness was just diagnosed in its late stage. Fortunately, it's treatable. We usually don't talk about stages of illness unless it's cancer. I'm sure there are other illnesses that are like that, but usually it feels like cancer. But the medical bills, yeah. Again, medical bills are the biggest reason for bankruptcy, in at least America. We can't afford to finish building this house, Isabel. But River made sure that he did finish it. River 
cared more for everybody else than herself, right? We can barely afford to pay for her treatment. I'm just relieved that she'll be okay, but... You don't know how much this place means to her. She's going to be heartbroken. I'd help, but Ted and I have been barely getting by since the market crashed. What are you going to do now? I'm... I'm going to tell her that we can make it. So this is before he had that conversation with River. I'm going to tell her that we can afford everything. She fucking saw through that. I don't want her to do anything crazy. You shouldn't lie to her. You don't understand, Isabel. If she found out, I'm not sure which she'd choose. So what? If she chooses not to save herself for the sake of this place, then so be it. Well, that's exactly what happened. It's what she really wants. It's this idea of do people get to choose things like that for, like, when is their own health and their own life, right? Even if it means that they are choosing something that could potentially or will result in their own death. This idea of, like, um, DNRs, like, do not resuscitate. Um, like, that conversation feels like either exactly what we're talking about or very similar. The same with some areas, or the same with, um, uh, like, physician-assisted suicides when we have, like, terminal diagnosing, diagnoses. Like, these feel like very similar conversations about this idea of, like, when, when do we have the ability to, to withdraw consent? Consent. And when do we have the ability to potentially consent to things like this? It feels like very controversial things when we're talking about this. And I feel like the reason why is because it's so emotionally charged. We don't, we don't like people that we care about being put in that situation. We don't like people we care about to get terminal illnesses. We don't, people, we don't like people that we care about. To, to leave us. So even if they have a terminal illness and it's not us, I think that we want them to stick around. I think that's why a lot of times these conversations feel kind of controversial. There's just like so much emotional pain involved. It's what she really wants. I really dislike when you neurotypicals. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that in a game. I don't dislike when you neurotypicals think you know what's best for others. I hate when you call me that, Izzy. <laughs> Do you think this is all about her? Who? Anya? Or River? What about me, Isabel? Well, again, right? If we're talking about these things that, again, feel like conversations about potentially physician assisted suicide or potentially like DNRs sometimes these, these things feel like we're saying if if friends and family want one thing but the, the patient right the person who's struggling with this stuff wants another like who gets to make the decision I don't know right like it's that's where it feels so so I don't know. Everybody's emotions are valid completely, which is why for me that always feels like a hard choice. I can't just like choose and say like, oh, this person is va is more valid than the other, right? After all these years, am I not allowed to be selfish even once? I think the hard part of this is that let's say if we are selfish with a choice like this, if, if the selfishness comes at the pain of someone else, that's why it's so hard for me, right? I see that and I go like, yeah, in general, could you, you like have those random selfish moments because it makes you feel better? Sure. But that also, that doesn't feel great if it means that someone else is hurting because of a selfish choice, right? Like, I, of course, the opposite then is true too, right? If River makes a choice that makes her feel good, but it makes someone else feel like shit, there's no, there's no winning in these situations. That's what makes them hard. And that's what potentially makes them controversial. I don't know. It's all gross and awful, but it's inherently part of life. 
I... It's so emotional, too. I don't want to be alone, Isabel. Nobody does. We're not built to be alone. I'm not going to let her die. I don't think you can control that, though, John. I, I like... A lot of what you're saying is super valid. Don't think you can control that part, though. That's arrogant. Oh. I don't care. Where are you going? I'm going to pick something from this cliff to bring back to her. It'll at least give her some comfort. That doesn't make what you're doing any less wrong. <laughs> Isabel's like calling him out on shit. Nick wanted me to give you this. What is it? Music box. He said it's called Everything's Alright. It isn't. It doesn't mean it won't be better in the future, though. Like, this idea of everything's going to be okay, though. doesn't always feel like it will be okay, which is valid. Sometimes it feels like when we're told everything's going to be okay, it feels minimizing, even though it is true. It feels like we're being told that we can't feel how we're feeling, which I don't think is the intention. I think it's a, a, I think it's a true thing, but if feels minimizing to how, like, the pain we're currently feeling. Oh. So we can't get back up here. We got two from the gate, so we need two more. For the pickled olives. We go into the house? No. At least not the way that I was clicking. Oh, we can! We can also be acquired from exploration. The house is so weird to explore when there's only like one floor. <laughs> I am curious what happened to the daughter. That sucks so much too. To lose your wife and your daughter. I'm assuming that that's what we're talking about. Oh man, I gotta do this again. Three moves? That's not happening. I did do it in three moves! Damn! No, pickled olives. I was not expecting to do that in three moves. We are still in, like, older-ish adult, or, like, adulthood. So, you guys are really going for it, huh? Yep, the construction's starting in just a few months. It's a bit of a squeeze, we had to split the payment, but with financing, we'll make do. That's a big house, too. So it's not like we're talking about a family that was, like, super wealthy, right? Like, this was a stretch. How wonderful having your dream house built at such a beautiful site. You had your wedding at that lighthouse near there all those years ago, didn't you? Like, but the site seemed to be kind of painful for some reason. Though the site of the house is connected to their wedding, at least. That's not all that's special about it. Exactly. 
we have a long history with that place. Well, it's good to have some good news at a get-together for once. Cheers and congratulations, you two. What's that? Hey, cheers. And that. Be right back. I'm going to get some fresh air. What's that and that? Me too. What are those two? Those look like figures that are, like, shadowy like us. Okay, so the two... Two girls left? Well, buddy, it's sure been a while. Hasn't it? Who knew how hard it is to get across a few cities nowadays? <laughs> that river, still so quiet, huh? Like, they're... It's one of those things where it's like, that's, that's my wife you're talking about. Like, <laughs> eh, she's actually been talking of at home and with Isabel. I guess she's just not used to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the bad guy here, huh? Not bad guy, just like not used to you. Oh, hey, did you tell River that thing from back then? What thing? I did. So how did she take it? For the most part, she took it well. What is the thing? But something bugs me. Ever since the incident, she's been making these strange rabbits out of paper. Origami rabbits? Yeah, lots of them. Ha! <laughs> I used to fold origami animals for my daughter all the time. This is the same music that was in the basement of the house. So, like, this has something to do with what is it, Anya? What's wrong with that? I don't think it's the same thing. She's been doing nothing but making the same rabbits day in. Day out. Our house is literally filled with them now. Didn't Isabel say something like that is a common trait with River's condition? What is River's condition? So are they... Okay. Isabel made a comment about neurotypicals as in like... So Isabel made a comment about like neurotypicals, which is not a phrase that you normally hear. <sighs> I feel like it it's like a more common phrase in like the the neuro the like neurodivergent community. And the reason why I say this is essentially if we like we only we tend to use language that we know that we understand and if we aren't really super familiar with certain aspects of mental health, we're not going to use that language. So neurotypical is essentially this idea of like I guess normal. Normal in the sense of like, usually, uh, let me back this up. Backing all of this up. When we talk about like neurotypical stuff versus like neurodivergent and all that other stuff, I realize the world is not that binary. Keep in mind, I may be explaining this in a way that is like, not the best. Um, other mental health professionals may explain this in a way that um, is different from how I'm explaining this or me just disagree with how I'm explaining this. All of this is totally fair. Um, I'm, I'm really just giving my perspective on this. But, um, and I may just um, be giving a perspective on something that um, changes over time as I, I personally like learn, grow, change as a therapist. All of those are like disclaimers that I want to put out there. But... I feel like when people usually talk about, like, neurotypical stuff, like, the, the phrase neurotypical, usually people talk about it as, like, you're either, like, neurotypical as in, like, normal or neurodivergent. And usually people talk about neurodivergent as though, like, it's the ADHD is technically considered, like, neurodivergent and, or autism. And the autism spectrum is, like, neurodivergent. Um, and there are some other kind of, like... Um, learning so, some like mental health stuff that impacts learning that is also considered like neurodivergent like dyslexia things like that um but you usually hear about it a lot with like the adhd community or um autism the autistic kind of community so when you hear neurotypical then that basically means like not neurodivergent that's what i mean when i say like normal because you know neuro is in like brain and typical is in like normal, right? And then neurodivergent is in like divergent is in like not normal, I guess. 
and neurom is in like brain right so these kind of like two 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 ways of thinking about it and again the world is more than just black and white but isabel said like oh you neurotypicals and like your ways of thinking and we only would use language like that if we're familiar with that language first of all and that makes me think that maybe isabel it is either diagnosed or considered neurodivergent in some way shape or form but this phrase right here makes me think maybe it's not just Isabel. Maybe it's also River. Because it's like this phrase of, didn't Isabel say, that is something that is a common trait with River's condition. So, that past memory about the neurotypical comet plus this comet makes me wonder if River is diagnosed with something like um, autism. Where maybe there's some aspect of like there can be some amount of repetition or um schedule like comfort and scheduling that can kind of come with that and maybe that kind of is showing up as like these rabbits especially if we pair it with grief like that's like maybe how the grief is com is being comforted um and i i am saying this all with this idea that like um uh ADHD and um, autism are not something that I super specialize in. So I may also be talking about this in a way that is not super accurate. And I totally want to own that. I do not want to represent myself in a way that is inaccurate. I, I'm not an expert on ADHD. I'm not an, an expert on um, <laughs> autism. Um, when it comes to therapy, just because I have a general... <laughs> A general training in a great deal of things does not mean I'm an expert in everything. And so I want to own the fact that, like, I am not an expert on this stuff. Um, so put that out there. Yes, but something doesn't feel right this time. So almost like Johnny is familiar with how, like, again, if this is what we're talking about, almost like Johnny is familiar with, like, how River's mental health stuff shows up. If you want to, whatever that is, whether we're talking about autism or not. But this is different. This is unusual. For her. When I ask her about it, she never answers. Instead, she gets this distant look in her eyes. It's almost as if she wants something from me. But, like, has a hard time communicating it. And the strange thing is, I feel like there's something I owe her to. Have you asked Isabel? Yes. She said she talked to her about it, but got nothing. Hmm. Well, but if they're talking right now, ironically, like River and Isabel, which is funny in its own way. But if River is having a hard time communicating it, uh, maybe she still has a hard time communicating it to Isabel. Well, I'm certainly not one to inquire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, you've been inquiring this whole time. But whatever. But I'll tell you this. I've known you since middle school, so we're going to see more memories with Nicholas. And you're notorious for overthinking. So, with what little information we have, we could guess that maybe Johnny struggles with anxiety. And maybe um, River has some struggles with autism. I don't know if we would even say, like, struggles with. Like, she is autistic. We're probably just imagining things. There's no need to get too worked up. Usually when someone says that, something's oh, always wrong. But anxiety convinces us that... Anxiety convinces us that something bad will happen in the future. So you're going to... It's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to look for proof that something bad is going to happen in the future. So that's what you're always going to see. But I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You're probably right. Well, then, ironically, we know bad things did happen with his wife, right? So, like, that doesn't... That doesn't help. Probably. I'm always right, John. Who are these figures? Wait. So even he himself never knew what was up with those rabbits. Forget about the stupid rabbits. We've got bigger problems. It's a confined memory and there are no mementos everywhere. Don't worry. We can probably dr draw one out from him. How? Leave it to me. I just got to give the bartender a quick visit first. Oh, these are other people. Got it.
I feel like this is actually a good place to stop. I have no idea how much more there is to this game. I feel like a decent chunk is still left, though, considering how much of, like, the timeline there is left. But in this part of the game, we've seen um, memories of um, River. And we've seen a little more of their relationship, their dynamic. And the fact that she died from some kind of terminal illness that she purposely chose not to get treatment for. But, like, the house is super important to her. I'm assuming that they had a kid, and, and that's connected to all of this. Um, and, like, there are these little hints of, like, their own mental health stuff. Like, how John could be struggling with anxiety. How much of an impact that had in his life, it's hard to tell, really. We've had, like, one or two comments about it. Um, but they are giving us a bit of information about River, and maybe River is autistic. Um, which is something I wonder. I don't want to read too far into something if maybe that's not the case, but that's something I wonder based on, like, the, the comments that they've been kind of making. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. The one thing that I do like about that, though, is if that is the case, I feel like a lot of video games show... And all media, all media, really, like, has, has this habit of showing autism in this really negative light, Autism is, is a spectrum, and media tends to show, a, a, I guess, a side of autism. And then they they kind of give people the impression that that is the only way that autism can, can really, I guess, show up. Um, and if we have River here, and River is, is autistic, what that means is that they are showing a person who had a wonderful relationship and was loved and it wasn't for, well first off they're not making the they're not making it just about that they're making her as a fully fleshed out character where like that's that's a part of her life but not her the only thing about her life because sometimes that happens when we see characters in media where Yes, there's it's representation, but like that's it. Like there's no character besides that. It's just a, a character with a trait, and that's their only thing. That's not the case for River. River is a person first and foremost. I mean, you know, as much as you can in a video game, take you know, you know, you know what I mean. Um, but there's also this idea that they're showing someone who has these traits. Um, I'm running with the idea that she's autistic, but, but who has these things and who has potentially these struggles that can come with that. And despite that, they're showing her in this happy and healthy relationship where she was loved and like her loss was meaningful and impactful because of the fact that she was loved. And I think that that is really powerful because so much of the time we look at things that, that are mental health related and we basically end up telling ourselves, because of, of this thing, because of this mental health thing, I, I, it means I'm not worthy. It means I'm not lovable. It means I won't be in a relationship. Um, it means I won't find anybody. It means I won't have meaningful connections or that this thing that shows up, it means I, that I should hide it. It means because like I, it, it'll stand in between me and love or me and meaningful, deep connections. And I don't think that that's true at all, but I can say that for forever. And it's sometimes it's, it's hits different to have it be shown to us. But that's exactly what this game is showing. It is showing a character who's a person first and foremost and who had a deep, meaningful connections regardless of whatever she was struggling with or, um, you know, whatever rabbit she made. And I really like that so far. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on the game and the video so far, and I will see you next time.